Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be starting off my week 3 Stranger Things Readathon vlog. If you haven't seen my week 1 and my week 2 vlogs, you should definitely go check those out so you can stay up to date and know what I've been reading, see if I've been sticking to my TBR video that I made. I really haven't. I'm terrible at doing TBR shit. Like, I, I can't stick to TBRs. It is impossible. I'm a mood reader and I'm always looking at another book, a new book that I'm feeling, I'm vibing with. It's always a different time. I got a problem. If you've been keeping up, you know that I'm currently in the middle of A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. Last night I listened to more of it and I reached page 256. Today's September 15th around like 10 o'clock. Haven't gotten to read yet today because I've been doing schoolwork and shit like that so that's so much fun. We love homework. <laughs> so now I'm ready to read, maybe watch a few things on YouTube. A Blade So Black, if you don't know what it's about, it is a modern day twist on Alice in Wonderland. It follows a black teenage girl. I believe she lives in Atlanta. One day her father dies and the day that her father dies a nightmare, a big monster freaking thing attacks her and this dude kills it. It kind of reminds me of Shadowhunter vibes like for real but there's monsters that come from Wonderland and if a human is feeling like a really intense emotion sometimes that can draw them out and will attack them. When Alice is able to see Addison, her future mentor in fighting these nightmare people. Whoa this really does does sound like City of Bones. For real? Honestly, this is a very nostalgic book. Like, it feels like something I would have read when I was younger, and it reminds me of those City of Bones vibes, and I, I just love it so much. She ends up being trained by Addison, who is from Wonderland, and he teaches her how to kill these nightmares, and eventually she gets to go into Wonderland. She gets to pass through the worlds, kill these nightmares all the time, but one day, Addison gets attacked. He's poisoned by this bad guy from Wonderland, and she has to venture into Wonderland deeper than ever before for the chance of hopefully curing him. It's crazy because she's also trying to deal with her human life, her friends, her mother, and keeping it a secret and fighting in Wonderland and it's so interesting and it's just such a good vibe and it's probably gonna be like a four stars for me but it's something I that I'm enjoying so much and I'm listening to the audiobook and it's just so peaceful and nice to listen to because it really does take me back. Like I feel like this is an urban fantasy book that everybody can enjoy in my opinion and I'm pretty sure our main character is queer. I'm a assuming she's bisexual because she seems to be attracted to men and women but I'm not positive. I know like people have said that she is queer. I'm just not positive what exactly like she labels herself as. For school I've been reading The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I'm on page 147 of this book. I have two chapters left. If you watch my vlogs you know that I've read this book before. I gave it a four to five stars. It's probably my favorite classic I've ever read. I'm not really that into classics. This one just has some such a intriguing vibe. I kind of forgot like what exactly was going on. It's so mysterious. Like you want to know about Gatsby. It's not from Gatsby's point of view. It's from this guy named Nick Carraway. He doesn't really know anything about Gatsby yet and he's just investigative and like I, you just want to know what's going on with this group of people in this book. It's very mysterious and you just really want to dive in so you can know the secrets. The secrets are a bit underwhelming but whatever. <laughs> I actually want to do a quick book haul because I've accumulated some books and I want to show you them. So my wonderful friend Julia from the channel A Reader's World, if you love Percy Jackson you should definitely subscribe to her but you should sub Blah. You should subscribe to her either way, obviously. She is freaking awesome. She gave me some books that she has had on her shelves and didn't want anymore. So she gave me these editions of Catching Fire and Mockingjay. And this edition of Catching Fire, she actually annotated for me, like wrote stuff on the cover gave me a cute little note and it's just the sweetest like little gift ever. Thank you so much. I just I love that so much and the quote you wrote on it is just so cute. Like oh my god. I'm so glad to have these because I have the first book in these editions and I never had the second and third one so I'm so glad to finally have these editions for my favorite trilogy. She also had a hardcover of the selection by Kira Cass and we all know I'm trash for this series at least the trilogy the first three books of it. I'm trash for it. I've never had a hardback of the first one 
one. I have a hardback in every other book by her and it's bothered me for a while. Like I just wanted to get the hardcover to make it look nice and pretty. Thank you Julia for giving me your copy of it because I know you hated this book. <laughs> and a book actually was released today. Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I was supposed to unbox this but no I just opened it. This is one of the books that I had on my original TBR for this readathon. I'm going to try to fit it for a challenge because the original challenge that I had it for I used it for something else. But I do want to read this book this month. I'm debating if this is going to be my next read or The 100 by Cass Morgan because I'm really wanting to read that series because the show has ruined my life and has just ruined everything, okay? I need to read the books as therapy because apparently the books do something better than what the show just did and I need to know if the books are better. Like I just, I need to see it. I need to experience it for myself. So I'm either gonna read The 100 or Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I think this is a little bit of a mysterious book. I think she wakes up beside a dead body. She gets real, like I, just, I don't think she killed him. She's like, what's going on? So I might read this for like, read a mystery book challenge because I feel like that fits. It's like that's pretty mysterious not knowing how the heck this dude beside you is dead like what i also want to show you something really sweet i have a subscriber abby m she's the nicest person ever and for some reason she spoils me so much like all the time like i feel really bad like i hope you don't feel the need to do that but i'm very thankful she got me a book today ghost squad by clarible a ortega and i believe this is like a cute little halloween read spooky vibe it's a middle grade has ghosts it was compared to Coco and Ghostbusters and I recently watched Coco and it made me sob. I freaking loved Coco. I just feel like this is gonna be such a vibe. I might squeeze it in this month if I can. She also got me a Stranger Things Funko Pop. It's 11 elevated. This is one of my favorite Stranger Things Funko Pops and I never had it. So thank you so much. I've been so wanting this one for so long and I just wouldn't let myself get it. I love it so much. She's so freaking cute. She's floating. Hey everyone, it's still the same day. It's like 1.30 in the morning and I have to wake up at 9.30 tomorrow. So I don't know what I'm doing awake right now, but I wanted to update and say I did just finish A Blades of Black by L.L. McKinney. I gave this book a four to five stars as I was expecting. This one was so much fun. As I was saying earlier, it was just a very nostalgic read. Even though I haven't read it before, it just felt very similar to the types of books that I was reading in middle school and just the early stages of my reading career and I just feel like so many people could enjoy this and have so much fun with this just because it, it's like lighthearted. There's still serious stuff going on like there's battle scenes and she's fighting these monsters but it just feels like a very like homey read like it just feels like I have read this vibe before and that made me happy. I'm so excited to continue with this. I have the second one and I'm probably gonna read it in October just because I have a whole TBR I'm trying to do. I feel like it's gonna be even better than the first one. I feel like each one's gonna be better. I think it's a trilogy. The third one's not out yet. I really recommend it. I think it's so much fun and I also really ship the main character Alice with this girl. Loki, I feel like there's some hints and sprinkles in here that that relationship could be a thing in the future. Right now she's kind of like crushing on this dude in this book but there was like a few lines where I was just like wait like I have a feeling that she might have a thing for her and you know I've heard this book is gay and that it has queer people in it maybe I'm on to something I did just start reading The 100 by Cass Morgan I actually got the audiobook and the ebook for this so I kind of enjoy physically reading book with the audiobook in the background it actually like really helps you comprehend things a lot better. I've been doing that a lot with my school readings. I'm so emo right now because I just read like three chapters and it's so similar to the first episode and the characters that I love so much they're like exactly the same at least right now. That's all I wanted because my, my two favorite characters Clark and Bellamy in this series like I love them so much and if they are like the way that they are in the show in this book it will be everything like I'm already really enjoying this and I'm so excited like will this be my new favorite series apparently there's four books in it 
so excited. I really hope this is gonna be my shit and that it gives me therapy from that episode the other day. I literally have tears in my eyes, but okay, I gotta go to bed. Ah! Hey everyone, I'm back with another update. It is 2.20 on September 17th and I officially finished The 100 by Cass Morgan. I listened to this as well as read it through the ebook. I ended up giving this book a four to five stars and I realized I never even explained the plot of this book. I only was really talking about the TV show. The basic premise is that like a hundred years ago before this book, Earth kind of died. Like radiation made it unlivable. Nobody could be there. So a lot of the humans escaped to space. And our characters that we know has been living in space since then, like their ancestors and now they're there. They're running out of oxygen. If anyone does a minor crime or anything, they pretty much kill you because they need every ounce of oxygen that they can have because they're running out and they don't know if earth is okay to go back on yet. The freaking thing that they decide to do is they send a hundred of like the delinquent kids, kids that committed a crime, but they won't kill people until they're at least 18. So pretty much those kids are waiting for their death. Like they're not going to be pardoned. They're going to be executed when they turn 18. So they send a hundred of those kids down to earth to see if they survive. They have tracking devices, checking their vitals and everything, making sure if this earth is okay to live on again because this is their last option. All of our main characters, Clark, Bellamy, Wells, a bunch of them are down on earth. This book is highly focused on character development. There's a lot of flashbacks and it's really not very plot heavy which wasn't my favorite thing and I probably mostly gave this book a four to five stars because I'm already like attached to some of these characters through the TV show so it was really easy for me to be excited to read about them in this and a lot of their storylines are very very similar. There's actually a new POV from this girl named Glass that's not in the TV show and there's actually a bunch of characters that are in the TV show that are not in this book which is sad but I was bracing myself for the differences and I'm really just reading this series right now because I want to see Clark and Bellamy end up together. <laughs> Like, that's the only thing I care about. This is the thing. The show makes their relationship very slow burn. But they're on season seven of the show and it still hasn't happened. This book, they already kissed. But then they, like, got an argument and they hate each other again. But, like, whoa, I was not expecting that. And low-key, I'm okay with it. Like, I'm reading this book for that reason. So, it's okay. But, honestly, this book felt like one or two episodes in season one. It did not get to things quickly. Like, in the show, like freaking episode one the ending is the ending of this book pretty much it definitely felt like a more prolonged version of episode one and honestly i'm just really excited to read the other three after this i feel like if you go into this not expecting it to be the most amazing thing ever and you really just wanted to see clark and bellamy then you might enjoy it but i definitely think if you had never experienced this show before and you just blindly went into this book i'm not really sure how deeply you would have felt for this book I I flew through it if you can't tell like I could not stop reading it. I was obsessed with it so that's why I'm happy. Hey what's up guys it's Peyton and today I'm bringing you week three of the Stranger Things readathon. Dude we've already did the intro. I'm reading a book. Dude called... I don't have time for this already has so much footage. I'm reading a book called Grown. It's about a girl with a big ass earring. It's pretty. Why is my mom clattering in the kitchen as soon as I click record? It's tradition. <laughs> Okay, hey guys, I'm back with another- Oh my gosh, she's carrying the dishes! I'm not playing, guys. It's every time. She was not doing this a minute ago. It literally started happening when you click record. I can't stand it. It's every single time I ever have this simple idea of maybe filming a clip. The dishes don't need to be done every night. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back with another update. Today is- Today's the 18th. It's almost midnight, so it's like the 19th now, but whatever. I want to give an update. Last night, I read 200 pages of Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I picked this up because I knew I really wanted to read it. I believe I'm reading this book for Nancy's Challenge, read a mystery novel. I was originally going to read How to Be Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kindy. I think that's their name. I decided I wanted to save that one for a later month because it's 
non-fiction. I just feel like it'd be easier for me to read fiction during a readathon when I have so much schoolwork already and I'm trying to read as much as possible. I really wanted to fit this book in for a challenge since I used Star Daughter for the challenge I originally planned. So we're going for a mystery novel because there's a whole mystery in this novel about something really scary and when I tell you this whole book I've been teared up. Don't let the yellow cover fool you. It's not a happy book. It's actually so scary and there's even a trigger warning section in this book. It says content warning mentions of sexual abuse, rape, assault, child abuse, kidnapping, and addiction to opioids. So if any of that would trigger you, stay away from this. It literally is about a girl named Enchanted. I love her name. That's like literally such a pretty name. And the whole premise that I knew going into this book is she wakes up beside a bloodied man. There's blood everywhere. She has no memory of what happened. He's murder. She doesn't know if she did it. She has no idea what went on. This book is actually told during flash forwards and flashbacks. Most of the book is a flashback. So it's the then section. But the now section is the part where the man's bloodied and he's dead and the police are coming in. It's so freaking juicy. I want to know what happened with that whole death thing. It is driving me insane. Like the suspense is for real. I thought this book was just gonna like take place after the murder, but no, this shows you what happened before and we find out quickly that Corey Fields, the man that was murdered, is this really famous singer. Enchanted's actually an aspiring singer and she lives in New York and she comes across this guy named Corey Fields. He's a very famous singer, has worn so many awards, like everybody knows him. He starts giving her singing lessons and let me just say, red flags but he seems nice at the same time. Like he's being very kind to her, but she's a 17 year old girl, he's 28, and he's being a little bit too close. Pedophile. Yeah, he's being a pedophile. She's so in awe of him, she's so excited that such a big celebrity is taking interest in her that she's not really catching on to the weird vibes. And I feel like this probably has happened to so many girls. All these green tabs I have so far, none of the cute moments. There's not even cute moments in this book. There's nothing freaking happy. I'm keeping track of all of the red flags. Like that's literally, I should have used the red color. <laughs> red flags red tabs that would have been the perfect thing well too late now i know i have i literally have some red tabs i was gonna use that for romance i have 170 pages left of this i need to read it it's such a devastating novel i'm emotionally invested this reminds me so much of the other book that i read from her i think in june or july monday's not coming that book was very mysterious. The whole book, you just want to know what was happening. And I love that vibe. I love trying to figure out a mystery or just what the heck is going on. No notice, but Brett's here yep. this weekend. He wants to give you a reading update. That's my update. <laughs> <laughs> I finished Daughter of the Siren Queen. Yes, if you've been keeping up with the vlogs, you know that he read Daughter of the Pirate King and was in the middle of Daughter of the Siren Queen. And then he left to go back to the army but he did finish that book what did you give it a five a five out of five stars and then what did you read after that diary of a wimpy kid <laughs> he did diary of the wimpy kid as she, the reread challenge she said that i could she gave me the pass dude it's a book why would it not count there's a lot of pictures okay graphic novels count for reading challenges True. he read that as a as the challenge for reread because that's the only book he ever read <laughs> <laughs> that he could reread. Yep. And what are you reading now? I'm reading Throne of Glass. Here's my copy of it. We actually got him the pocket edition because he said he wanted it for some reason. How far are you into it? You're pretty far, aren't you? I'm 160. He is a kale stan. I very much approve of you. The book is shit. No, he's like really enjoying it. He keeps mispronouncing the characters' names even though I keep telling him how to say it. Hey, I will forever call that place that starts with an A Alderaan. Alderaan? Well, well the <laughs> oh, it's from Star Wars. It's from Star Wars. Yeah, I'm not sure which. It's a Darlin, man. It's, it's a Darlin. It's up here. You don't even know your Throne of Glass map? It's Alderaan. You don't even know your freaking geography. That is Alderaan. It's a Darlin. It's Alderaan. Okay, well, he's reading it. Bye. Hey, everyone. I'm back again. It is the morning now, and I guess it's September 19th. I was not expecting to read the entirety of Grown last night because I started reading at like one or two, so I, I didn't think I should stay up late. Each time that I picked this book up, because it was in two sittings, I read the first 200 pages, one sitting, and then the last almost 200 pages, 
in the next sitting. It is addicting. I am terrified. I'm so invested in this main character, Enchanted. I want her to be okay. I need to find out what happens. I need to know if she's safe. I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but it's such a punch. Like, it gut punches you. This book, I feel like the whole way through, I had tears in my eyes. And if I was feeling a bit more emo last night, I might have been sobbing for hours, but I held it in. <laughs> Definitely one of my new favorite books of all time. Like, I'm saying it. I'm doing it. It's not enjoyable because it's such hard material to get through watching this girl be so abused and just watching her spirit diminish over the course of this book is horrible but it's so important it's such a warning to all these young girls especially black women because people don't believe us like people don't believe women especially black women for some reason, they just will not listen when we say that someone did something to them. Like, something was wrong in this situation. They try to make so many excuses. And I feel like most of us know this. It's just horrible to know that. And it's horrible to witness in this book. But I feel like this could be a very eye-opening book for some people. If you're able to read this, because obviously it could be very triggering for some people. It really could open some eyes or just help warn people of red flags. Just letting girls know that it's not your fault. It's his fault or whoever it was abusing you. Like, they should have known better. It wasn't your fault. You're a young kid. It wasn't your fault that you didn't know. He should have known. Five out of five stars. Absolutely phenomenal. Terrifying, scary, sad, but very, very essential. I think this is such an impactful read. And I had so many tabs. For some reason, I like only use green tabs. <laughs> it just ended up being that way. I had dark green tabs for like warnings or just like bad signs. Like that's how I was marking up this book. And then I had regular green tabs for quotes because there's a lot of beautiful lines in here. And blue for powerful moments because there was a bunch of powerful moments where I'm like, Dude, why is she slamming the door so loud? I just wanted everybody to know how much I loved this book. And I want everybody who can read it to read it because I feel like it's so important. And Tiffany D. Jackson is definitely one of my favorite new authors. Both books I read by her were five stars. So I need to read her two other books. I literally own them. They're like over here. I don't feel like getting them though. It's allegedly and let me hear a rhyme. What I love about her book so much is like there's a bit of a mystery, at least in the two that I've read. There's a bit of a mystery that you are just dying to know. You just need to know the answers and it keeps you going. And that's why I feel like this is such a page turner because not only were you scared, but there was also that mystery of like, he's dead. Like, did she kill him? Did someone else kill him? Like, you don't know what's going on. And it's, it's so scary because like, yes, this dude deserves to die. But if she killed him, I'm worried for her because she turns 18 in this book and you know, she could go to jail if they accuse her of that. I just love this main character so much and she deserves the world for real. So highly recommend this book. Hey everyone, I'm back. It is Sunday night. So close to the end of the week, I guess tomorrow is the technical end of the week but i'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog i actually have a lot of updates to give you so we all know the last thing i did was finish grown i forgot to mention that i did finish the great gatsby by f scott fitzgerald this week i don't know if i've already mentioned this but i give it a four to five stars just like i thought i would not really any thoughts other than that i read it for school also my hair is wet i got out of the shower that's why i look gross that means i've read eight books so far for the readathon and we still got like another freaking week of the readathon. So can we give myself some credit? Like I'm reading a lot, especially during college. How the heck am I doing this? I don't know. I had a low key goal of reading books for every single challenge. Macy, what is it? Macy? You want to say hi for the camera? Oh, she's so cute. I had a low-key goal of finishing every single challenge for the readathon, and I've been keeping up in my bullet journal. If you can't see, I have only these squares to fill left. I have a plan on how I'm going to do this. I already finished all of my team's challenges for Griswold Family. Each book I've been reading, I've been trying to get two challenges covered for that. So I only have three books left that I want to make sure I read by next week. So if you want 
to see me read Ghost Squad by Clarabel A. Ortega, Bookish in the Beast by Ashley Poston, and The Grace Year by Kim Liggett. It will probably be happening in my week four vlog, so stay tuned for that. I also want to do a quick book haul. I got some books. One I got from a used bookstore today. It is Frankly in Love by David Yoon. I only got it for eight bucks and has freaking navy edges and I just think it's cool. It is Nicola by did I say Nicola Yoon instead of David Yoon? Oh my god I'm so sorry. Nicola Yoon is actually David Yoon's hus wife. Oh my god I can't talk. Macy what am I gonna do? I can't even talk. David Yoon is Nicola Yoon's husband and he wrote this book a while ago and when I saw it in the used bookstore for eight bucks I was like okay I need it. <laughs> And all I really know is there's a fake dating aspect and I think the main character is Korean American. Then I got Dune by Frank Herbert. This is becoming a movie soon. It's a really old sci-fi novel that so many people have loved. People say Star Wars was inspired by this book. The trailer looks so, <laughs> the trailer looks so good. And honestly guys, I think I gotta say it. I'm low-key becoming a Timothy Chalamet stan. I didn't think this would happen. I've watched three of his movies so far. I'm breaking. I think I like him a lot. Like, I think I'm a fan. He's a really good actor, and Loki, he's so pretty. But I'm really excited for this movie. It has Zendaya, Timothy Chalamet, so many other big author authors. What am I saying? Actors. And it looks like a really fantastic movie, and I know that it's based off a whole series of books, so I'm gonna give it a try. I did get the box set for the 100 books because I did end up loving the first one. I gave it a four stars, though it's probably more of a three, but I just have a nostalgic reasons. I got the hundred the hundred day 21 it's book two the hundred homecoming book three and the hundred rebellion book four i'm trash but stay tuned for a whole reading vlog where i try to figure out is this book series better than the tv show i also got some funko pops today i got billy from stranger things i've been really wanting this one i've got 11 as well she's wearing her rain jacket i've always loved this one this is dustin in his hockey gear or whatever this is i think it's his hockey gear from I think season two when he was dealing with Dark. Then we have Will the Wise. We know him from season three. And then we have SpongeBob SquarePants with Gary on top of him. And it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how you have been doing for the Stranger Things Readathon. I would love to know. Grizzled family for the win. Like this video. Comment down below. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Make sure to follow all my social medias which are linked down below. And go click the bell button which is right by the subscribe button which you should have already clicked. And goodbye.